Isn't that cool? I got tomatoes all back here. Look at that, loaded with tomatoes. Look at all the flowers. Isn't that something? Look at all the tomatoes. Oh my gosh, I gotta go do a garden tour. I think I'll go start by the truck bed. I better run and go do that. I am doing a garden tour and you are not going to be in it today. Okay, hi everybody. It is Robbie from Southern California. And yep, that was a coyote. He just came right up while I was standing here. December 1st, we're in the holiday season. And for many of us, we are not in the growing season. So what I'm going to do is walk around, more strategize, and show you what is growing though. We still have things growing. This is the truck bed. And well, we still have food in there. Look at all the purple tomatillos back there, which we had for dinner last night. Oh, made such a good stir fry. It's not even a stir fry. It was, it was just everything chopped up, cooked together, and we threw it in tacos. It was wonderful. I still have the shark fin melon all over here. I'm not sure what to do with them. And they're still here. You know, these plants, though they're starting to go, are still holding on to a lot of their fruit. See, here's another one there. It's really full in there. There's quite a few. When the plants are outside the fruit, they last longer. They can last, let's say, a month or two longer than if you bring it in the house, sit it on the counter, they'll rot away. It, something generates into their little brain saying, it's time for the microbes to come in here and eat us away. But outside, they don't because it's not the right time to grow. Isn't that fascinating? So I leave them outside, and when I'm ready, I'll bring them in if I do, I don't know, or I'll compost them, but I, I do want to do something with the shark fin melon. This is some turmeric. I moved it here to see what would happen if it got more sun, but no matter what, they're going to die back. It's that time of the year. And then this is just Swiss chard that's still growing through here. So I've got Swiss chard, I've got different squash growing in there. I've got tomatillos that are on their way out. The season's wrong, but I collect them. I cook with them and I bring in extras. So then what I can do is freeze what I don't use. Let's go over here. Here, same old, same old. Maybe in the spring we'll get some stuff done. We've had a raccoon issue and they come in and they tear everything apart. So we're kind of figuring out what we're gonna do with that. But all in all, it's still going good. I leave this for the birds. The birds come and they feed on the sow thistle. This is sow thistle. Now, right now it's in the flower stage, so the bees will feed on it. But right now we're so cold. Let me show you. It's supposed to be raining right now. So it's probably going to rain pretty soon. So I want to kind of get through this quick because they predicted rain like now and hasn't started yet. My Moringa has got a lot of new pods growing, so I can take the seeds later and grow a new one. I'll probably chop it down. Maybe I'll start some more, but look at this giant Moringa is just growing in a five gallon bucket. That's all it's doing, and it's doing fantastic. I've got celery. I've got one squash left I haven't collected. It looks like a little tiny spaghetti squash. I thought, oh, a flycatcher just came by. He just left. I thought, it was broccoli, so I'm not sure it might be a hybrid because the heads are not right. But the greens are fantastic to use and eat. The pomegranate in the back, that is fascinating. What's leaning up against the wall back there is a pomegranate plant. It's a tree, bush, whatever you want to call it. But see how those have all died out? That big one there has died out? Well, it's getting enough warmth from the wall that it doesn't know it's supposed to go into hibernation. So it's still staying green. It's kind of like blanketed with all these things growing. You've got the Moringa leaned over and covering the pomegranate. Then you've got the sugar cane that is starting to show that it's gonna go out. Then we've got, like I said, this brassica growing up against it. So it's keeping it warm. It's like an, it's a warm blanket. So it doesn't know it's supposed to die back, but it will. Cause you can see the sugar cane's gonna die back soon and eventually will get colder and it will get the signal to die back. Tomatoes don't look that good, but let me tell you something. I picked a whole bunch for dinner last night. I've got some sort of melon growing here, and I think it's Korean melon, but I really don't know how they're going to make it. We are just too cold for the Korean melon, but we'll see what happens. Oh, look, my shoes have got onions growing in it. Walking onions are growing inside my shoes, and this is just a geranium I stuck there. I don't know what I'm going to do next year. It's not even next year. It's a matter of months. 
in the spring, but I'm going to throw a lot of flowers in there. I might expand it and bring the meadow a little further out. We'll see. So here I'm just going to leave it because whatever's growing now will be my winter harvesting, harvesting food, I should say. I've got walking onions. I've got garlic chives. That's just uh, geranium. I still have Swiss chard, of course, and I can move a lot of that around. These are the smaller leaves. I picked the really big leaves yesterday and the day before. See, old squash, I don't know if that will do anything, but some of these are, see, here's a zucchini right here. Now, there's two of them there, so that might make it. That's why I'm not pulling them out. Even though it's the wrong time of the year to grow zucchini, this time they're still going to throw some, and that's all I need are some small ones to bring in in the winter to use. Once spring comes, I think I'm going to compost this all in. My favorite squash is zucchini because I can use them big, use them small, grate them up, chop them, and freeze them. And I've got a lot frozen, so I will have zucchini to do whatever I want with all winter. This will, well, I don't plan on doing another cardboard garden here. I could change my mind. I really do feel I'm going to put totes here because anything I had in a tote, which is a small mini raised bed, is still going. The cardboard boxes kind of fizzled out, didn't do anything, and this gives me the opportunity to continue to grow food. I, mean, I can throw carrots and radishes and different things in here. It's got a nice warm wall if I want to, but with cardboard boxes, it literally fizzled out. And a lot of the boxes just grew a lot of black mold instead of really composting into the ground because well, here, let's st step over here for a minute. See how the boxes are above the ground? All it does is grow mold. That's all it does. It's not really doing anything because it, it needs to be covered. And if it's not covered, it's not going to compost into the ground. I could smash it down, but I'm not sure what kind of paint they use. There's been a lot of strings in some of the boxes that does, they just don't break down. It's a nylon type string. And I don't want critters and animals get caught in it. So I think I'm going to back off on some of the cardboard boxes. Maybe I'll do it if you want me to in the spring. Redo this one. Take everything out. Maybe make one box garden. But for me to have food all year, I would definitely go in a tote. Now, I hear your questions. Why not just plant directly in the ground? We have gophers. We have squirrels. And I can protect. And one more big thing. We have roots. And the roots go and rob all the nutrients from our plants. But when I'm in totes, I have a total control. They're actually being fed better, the plants, by me, because I'm throwing in leaf matter as they're growing, just throw the leaves back in, and then they get plant food naturally through nature, and they grow better than they would if they were in the ground. So that's why I prefer using a tote, and the plastic is fine. All these plastics are usually a two or a five, which is perfectly safe and the same thing you get your food from in the grocery stores and it doesn't even start to melt down until it's about 130 to 150 degrees and if we get that hot we have bigger problems so I don't worry about that. Even if you use the tote that was not let's say safe plastic it still needs a melting point and some of you are against plastic I'm not going to get into it but do you buy toothpaste to brush your teeth with? Go Google that. Okay, now, so we've got the cardboard boxes here that everything's fizzled out. You know what's growing? This Swiss chard is not in the cardboard box. Look at this, it's growing between the cardboard boxes. My tomatoes all died out. Everything really died out except for one bean that is so trying to grow. The scarlet runner beans are different than your peas and your green beans. They actually come back each year from the base, from the root. So it is really trying to still stay alive. And if I can find it, I'll move it. Or maybe I'll put something around it and cater to it and let it do its thing, since the gophers didn't get that. Here, I'm just trying to trick the cucumbers a little longer before we get too, too cold. And by covering them with plastic, it's like making a mini greenhouse. I still have cucumbers. I picked a real big one the other day. There's a smaller one there, and look, this morning, I just saw, look at this, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little one right there. Can you see that right there? So I may get a couple more and if it's, you know, we get a weather snap of really cold, then I won't. And that's okay. 
if it makes it, I get an extra cucumber or two out of it. And if it doesn't, I have free soil. So it's a win-win no matter what. And we'll see what happens with this. This came up late in the season and it's growing. So I'm gonna cater to that too. I might drape some plastic over that. That, by the way, is a shower curtain. I got that at Dollar Tree. But you can buy it by the roll, but I didn't need a big roll. Everything here, here's eggplant. I don't cut my eggplant down in the winter. I will watch it. And if the leaves, or I should say, start to turn really yellow, the leaves and the branches start to go, then I will trim it down. Right now I don't because I tend to have eggplant all winter. The corn is time to go. I've got to get that out. Got some more squash back here, kind of gave it a little shelter from the wind. That one is full, I think, of yellow squash. Let me see. I don't know if we can see. Look at that. So I'm trying to shelter it a little bit with the tool. The tool will work as a windbreak as well. The old lid sitting there. See how the wind is blowing? Wind creates cool, well, it creates a cool breeze. And then the plants get chilled. But with, when you have a windbreak, and I've done this all the time, see how this isn't blowing? See how nothing's blowing there? And yet you see all of it blowing there? That plant is being sheltered. I may be able to get some yellow squash off of that before it totally goes. All this is gone. There's a little one bent down there in my make it. Now the eggplant, I covered that also with a shower curtain. Doing really good because why? I came back and look at here. And we're going into winter and look what I've got. Eggplant. We're still in fall, but I've got eggplant. I still have flowers coming up. The bees can go through the top when the weather's warm. See, there's more purple flowers. So I may get a few more eggplant before I have to trim it down, before the weather turns. So I've kind of just sheltered. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm stopping the breeze, the cold breeze. You know when you're standing outside and you think, oh, it's cool, it's not bad, and then a cold breeze comes? Well, plants don't like that. And that's when it gives them the trigger, especially when it gets around the base of the plant. Oh, it's winter, it's going to die back. But if they don't get the cool breeze, you can save a lot of plants, unless you're under snow or you're freezing. Peppers are doing really good. I've got one there, the little celery here. I'll probably plant a new one later. This is just off the, the pepper tree up there. They keep falling and they grow pepper tree uh, trees in here, but I just pull them out and compost them. These I've been picking at night for dinner when I'm making something. I pick extras, wash them, dry them, and throw them in the freezer. I've got to get that stripped off. As Soon as I get it stripped off, if I can trick it a little bit more, I should have peppers, new green ones coming up. But see, it's still, we got black ones, and the black ones are young ones. See, there's, there we go. We still have peppers going. I may drape another plastic here, and then I'll continue to have the, we have so many peppers, I don't even care, to be honest. I've got a bag full in the freezer. So let's just keep walking. This is Malabar spinach that's going up. I'm not a fan of eating that much of it, but though I do put a little bit in a green drink when I make it, and then I sometimes make pink water with the berries. I don't want to squish it on my hands because if I do, you can't get it off. It's like a dye. So all this, what I'm strategizing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming through here on nice days in the winter and start to compost everything back. When I say that, just whatever plants I don't want, pick it and drop it. Then what will happen is I will have a good start with soil. I mean, think about it. Soil is expensive. When you get a good, reliable soil, it's going to cost you. Well, why not have it on the top? I will check each one to make sure it drains well. If it doesn't drain well, I'll remove a lot of what's in there because a lot of it, of course, has broke down. I will remove it and at least by where the holes are. See, this has got holes here. I'll remove it put in a lot of leaf matter in that area and then push it back. Then I'll be able to keep going and come spring, I can just start sticking things in there. Here's a tomato plant, look at that. Picked a real big one too, about I think a week ago. There was actually a few of them on there. Green sorrel, but I want to change a little bit up. Now this is cool. This is lettuce. They won't grow like this. I've got a whole video on this. When they're clustered like this, they just stay really small. The strongest will survive, and then the rest around won't make it, but I can pop those out, separate them, maybe put three in one big pot, you know, like a black pot like that, and they'll grow into big, massive, beautiful romaine lettuce uh, plants. But when you leave them in a cluster, they won't grow and they'll stunt. 
they'll just stay there. But when you move it, you end up with a big, beautiful lettuce plant. So I've been actually picking a few here and there and growing them on my deck so I've got lettuce growing. This is the garlic I planted. I've got garlic I'm planting in different places. Yes, that tree that I wanted to compost, what now, over a year ago is still here. But let me tell you something. I love the straight trunk on it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I would have to pick it out of there. It's growing in the tote because the holes are, see the holes? They're above the ground. So I know all the roots are in there. I could transplant it or put it in a big pot. And what should be done is graft it because it would take years to get fruit. So you take something off of a tree that's producing, graft it on there, a good branch, and then I'd be able to get it growing. I don't know if I'm going to bother. You can use anything for a raise, to raise a container. I've got a bird cage there. I've got an old chair I picked up on the side of the road there. I've got the patio chairs that people give away. Some, and look at that. These are the car table chairs, 10 bucks a piece. You can get them a lot of times at Walmart. And with that, you just get a couple boards across it, and you can put three of them. There's so many ways to raise the bed. But we'll see what happens in this. Oh, my gosh. This is Popolo seed. Look at this. Nothing eats it. Do they smell? No, they don't smell. Nothing eats it. The birds won't eat this. And to grow it, they grow. I mean, it, they grow really good. They'll grow when the weather's warm. But the point is, the insects love them when they're small. The tiny, tiny plants. I don't know if I, where I'm going to put it. I'll just put it here right now. So they get all eaten up. And then occasionally you'll find one poplo makes it. But once they get their main leaves, because they taste like cilantro, nothing will touch it. It's so funny. Nothing. And then it will grow. So I've got the one growing there. I should collect the seeds and then find the place where I want to plant it. I did have some growing in the meadow back there. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I've got so many seeds. There's literally thousands upon thousands of seeds. See how the seed pods are? And then they pop open, and that's what you end up with. Look at that. It looks like sow thistle, but the birds will not eat that seed. So it is completely different. Here I've got some parsley growing on top, more Swiss chard, and then these are the carrots. You know what I do with that. I actually pop the babies out, the baby carrots out of here, move them, and then they grow really good somewhere else. And this is carrot wood. I don't want it. I know people are going to say, it costs a lot to buy the tree. I don't want any more carrot wood. Look at that. That's carrot wood tree. And they drop their seeds, and they love the totes, and they grow like mad. So I end up with free soil, and that's a purple basil. Now, if I shelter this purple basil with a little bit of shelter just around the base, this will grow all winter here. Remember, we don't get snow, but we do get cold. We will go into the 30s at night, occasionally into the 20s, but normally into the 30s. But if I shelter it, it will grow. And this is the basil that grew for two years. See how I sheltered the trunk of it? Now you can see it. This is just like a coffee container cut. By sheltering the trunk, and it was sheltered by this too, it thought it was warmer than it was. It doesn't really generate uh, a memory or a thought on the leaves, but more towards the bottom of the base of the plant. That's where it, it gets its message, whether it's got to go dormant or not, and that works really good. And it did work, and it does work. So that is gone. Though I probably have seeds here, I will say the goldfinches absolutely love basil seeds, so they probably cleaned them out. And a tomato plant. That's it. Okay, so like I said, I'm strategizing what I'm going to do, and I want zucchini all through here, because I can freeze it, use it at all stages, and that's my favorite plant. Let's go in the front yard. Now we're in the front yard. I still have tomatoes growing in the front yard. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Tomatoes in the front yard. Got some flat leaf parsley there, different brassicas growing. I didn't do a whole lot in the front yard. I think I talked about that earlier in the year because I wasn't sure how much I could grow here. So I'm going to kind of step back this year and analyze it. I have another thought for the front yard. But you'll have to wait till maybe after the holidays for that. But because of these trees, they've gotten so massive, my pine trees. There's three giant trees here, and I absolutely love them. They create a little bit of too much shade, but I will say that the lime tree, look at this, the finger lime, it loves it. And we've been getting a lot of little finger limes. So that does like it. I wouldn't mind to have a few more. And then the brassicas don't mind, but in the summer, they get a little wimpy. 
and then they come back now in the fall. So I'm going to see, let's keep going, what I'm going to do here. I just kind of took a, I don't want to say a break because I still water it, take care of it, groom it, and harvest from it. I've got a lot of tree color and different things, but I'm going to kind of decide. Oh, I took this down. For years, you've seen the post here. Well, I'm going to go with geraniums here right now. Just kind of stuff them in there and water them. And I won't have to do anything else because I have another thought. I hope it works. If it doesn't work, I'll let you know. But right now, I have another thought. Okay. My ginger, turmeric, and stevia table is dying back. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's cool. So it's starting to do its thing, and this is what we want. We want it to get the message that, hey, it's cold and wet now. It's not time to grow. We've got to go dormant for about five or six months. Yes, five or six months. We may not be able to grow this until maybe May or June. I don't know. So it's slowly going yellow and brown. See all that? But you know what it's doing? Think about it. It's taking everything, all its nutrients now, and it's going back into the rhizomes. And that's why you harvest when everything goes brown. Now you can harvest it when it's green, beautiful plant, that's green ginger. You can do that, you can do it with turmeric. But if you wait, you'll get a much bigger harvest. The small ones will suddenly get bigger because they have to, like a bear going into hibernation, they have to store so they can come back full force in the spring when it starts to warm up and that's what you want again let me repeat this you can harvest it any time of the year but now is the time i'm going to wait i'm going to let all my ginger and turmeric completely die back because i still have a lot of green growth on it see and then the stevia is hanging in there this is all stevia but it's starting to go brown uh, stevia i just cut it back it just comes back on its own but I'm still using it, so I let it do its thing. It's being sheltered, too, for, by all the ginger and turmeric. And then I've got zinnias. What you see, the flowers, I just threw some seeds in there, and the zinnias are growing everywhere. So I've got turmeric in here. I've got tur the turmeric's got the big leaves. See how the big le the leaves are? That's turmeric. And then the ginger has the long, skinny leaves. So if you planted them up and mixed them up, you will know which is which. So don't worry about that. But I'm going to let it do its thing. Occasionally, I do reach down in there and I grab some out because, well, I don't want to get all money right now, but it's there. There's plenty of ginger in there, so I can reach in and grab what I want. I'm trying to see if anything's... Yeah, there's some, see? I can reach in and grab off the side or just take a whole chunk out. There's no big deal. But I'm planning on making a massive, massive garden of ginger and turmeric. So I have all I want. I don't even have to think, oh, am I using too much? That's what I'm going to do. So this is going to look beautiful, probably not until, well, it'll be all big and green in probably June and July. But it'll start coming back as soon as our weather warms up. But let's let it do its thing. You'll probably see in two weeks more brown. And then you'll see probably January 1st, it'll be all dead. And if I can get to it, I will get it all out, free some of it, continue to use some of it, and then store some of it so I can replant. All right, I hear you. The secret garden. I'm going to be honest. I have not been down here for probably over a week. I don't know what Gary's done. This is no joke, but he said he's been down here. So you and I are going to go down here because we'll just walk through the bird garden afterwards. We don't have to do this long because it's going to start to rain. I haven't seen this. That's what Gary said. Why don't you do a surprise when you're doing... Wow, he's leveling it out. Let's be careful not to fall down a hill because I don't know who'd be around to see me. Look at this. He is. I don't know what he's doing. He's got the bricks here now. These are seats. So instead of chairs, we're going to sit on bricks. I will have to come back here and groom. Look, I've got a nice big path. Oh, wow. Stuck under the plants. Okay. Wait a minute. Are we missing a tree? No, he's trimmed the trees back. Okay, so we've got the one that goes up and down. I think that's the strawberry fig. And then that one fell, but I like it like that because I can reach a lot and I'll trim a lot back. And the other reason I like it is it goes to the bird garden and it gives the birds a lot of place to sit. As you can see, I don't even see all the birds scooting around as we're back here because this is a big place for them. I think I'm going to run totes all along here. Oh, look, he is planting up. Okay, so this is 
the red dragon fruit. It's got red flesh, not white. He bought this last year, or probably early this year, and now he's got it planted. So he's planting them in pots. He's going to plant a lot of dragon fruit here. And then I'm going to get some totes in between later. I haven't been here. Look at that. I can walk. I couldn't walk before. Let me turn around so you can see. Look at that. I can walk all the way through into the rainbow garden. That would be something to do. A different path. See? Okay. I, like I said, I haven't been here. So he's getting ready to plant a lot of that. He's going to get rid of the wooden boxes. He's going to move them somewhere else. Here in Southern California with our heat and our warm weather, wood is like a sponge. It draws the water out. So if I water the plants and we're in warm, dry weather at the time, what happens is the wood sucks the water away and then the outside just I feel the wind. Can you see the things blowing? It just continues to dry. And when it dries, well, it evaporates the water out of it. Where a tote or a plastic container, why do you think you go to a nursery and everything is in plastic? Because it retains water. The water can only go out the holes on the bottom and off and out the top. No water can come out of the sides. So if the nursery was growing in wood or grow bags, they'd, be they'd have to have an automatic watering system if they were in a warm area because if the plants dry out, they would lose them. So nurseries have black pots. Don't worry about it getting too warm. It does not. And they have them in plastic because for over 100 years, that's what works the best. And the dragon fruit love it. Obviously, you've seen, we've got hundreds of dragon fruit. He picked the, the rest of them for Thanksgiving and we were using them then. You know, let's see if we can do this. Okay, now he stopped here. This will be really cool. I don't have any way to climb. I gotta climb up through the tree. Oh, this is great. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, now I can turn around. You can see what this does. This is the back of my bird garden, see? Now this all has, this is just dead geranium. This all has to come out See some of the geranium fall and they grow. And I'm gonna clean that up, get some more flowers and plants through here and get rid of all the geranium that died back and gets, you know, so I can get to the fountains and stuff easier, but there it is. So it is slowly coming and it's just a beautiful place to sit because it's got a massive view. It's just gorgeous to sit here. So this is what's going on here. So let's keep going. This is a path we've never done on the garden tour. This is the first. Now, all this, I get so excited over this. This is soil. I go around right now and I am filling buckets up with this because this is my next soil. This is what plants grow in, okay? You look around, you see trees and everything. Nobody's adding anything. We don't feed any of the trees here and we get a massive amount of citrus and everything because it's getting food from Mother Nature. As this breaks down, the microbes come, the earthworms come, it feeds the plant and then it does create, you wanna call it compost, call it compost, but this is what soil all is. It's a mix of rocks and then leaves that are broken down into beautiful matter. I'll put it here and I'll come back for it later. Even the fig leaves, those are perfectly fine to use. Let's keep going. Oh, we're going. Just kind of peeking through and look at this. Oh, there's a good one. We grow, we grow a lot of fruit. We gave a neighbor like 20 pounds, 30 pounds for his kids. Look at this. And then we've got there. This is a type of grapefruit. I think it's a fruit cocktail grapefruit. These are really good. Look at that. All being fed by Mother Nature. Leaves. See the back side of the garden? Doesn't look that good, but that's all right. And that is, there it is. Oh, we went up a whole different way. We haven't gone up yet. Let's see if we can get up. I'm going to switch hands. See if we can grab a hold. Something's been digging there. Probably the rabbit. There's my rainbow garden. Oh, we're up. And I didn't fall down. Look at that. So that is where the secret garden goes through. And the stairway is on the other side. Here sometimes... You'll look up and you'll see deer on the silhouette at night and it's so pretty because they'll come through here. You already saw the coyote that came while I was doing my garden tour. Standing there getting ready, he's just coming through. Well, we have deer that are up there too and it's just beautiful. This is just a big bottle brush that Gary planted years ago. Rosemary, 
This is just a plant for the hummingbirds. This is salvia fire dancer. Hummingbirds love it. Want to get that transplanted into the bird garden. I've got a whole idea for this chair. This one's broke. And I'm, I hope if my idea works, it's going to be fantastic. I'll do it with you. More rosemary back here. There's the pomegranate. There's a couple pomegranates left on it. Let's go over here. My papayas, I hope some of them make it. This one, something happened to this one. So this one's going to go. Probably cut that out and hopefully the smaller one makes it there. I've got papayas in the bird garden too. And then the smallest ones, I think, have died back. I'm not sure. Maybe there weren't that many here. But this one's making it. This is in a cardboard box. And this can be lifted, this trash can. There's no bottom on this trash can. This is, again, protecting the trunk. So I could leave it. I could cut it down. I could do whatever I want with it. I'm going to leave it for the winter, of course. And then just a, a tote with some polka dot plants, nothing in here. And then the cactus that I picked up years ago as I was driving down the street. So excited. I saw it on the side of the road. Look, no thorns. I told you the story. Next time I drove by, I saw another cactus. I was so excited. I grabbed the pad and see, there's a couple thorns there. But really, it doesn't have thorns. But the other one did. And it got embedded in my hand. And I have never picked up another cactus on this side of the road again. So that's that. And then this is the rainbow garden. Maybe we'll walk into the bird garden at the end. So this is the back side. And boy, do I have a lot of work to do. Because I want it to look nice. And I want it to be fully functional. Now these are onions. And I separated them. So I should have white and yellow in there and red in there. And I haven't planted anything in that yet. This is really simple. Two bricks. And then that's a grill that came off of an old refrigerator. It worked fantastic. I went with dish pans on this, and this didn't take long to do it all. And again, there's very, I don't think there's any soil in here to speak of. I believe I've got the video when I, I did do a few clips of this. This is just leaves and stuff from the garden, and it's all going to break down and make its own soil. Let's step over here. Strawberry towers. I don't know if I'll mess with strawberry towers this year, but I'm growing strawberries. Gary ate some the other day. And I had some. This is the potato mint. This is another one that will die back when the weather gets really cold. So far, it's still going. So it will have all those tubers you can eat and use like potatoes. You have to I have to cover that for the rabbits. I still have a, the red roselle is still growing. And then I, I picked a pepper last night. Keep getting peppers. Look at this. It's all full of peppers. Is that cool? This is just a zinnia. And this is just a cutting I started. Just of a... Uh, Geranium. That's it. I don't know what's growing in here. Little things are growing in there. That's, you know, that's my two system. So I got a two system bucket that I'm composting in there. And anything that comes out and goes in here, that's pure plant food. Go watch a video on that. Then I'm going to get this planted in the spring. So I've got my holes already made. And then that is the other vertical garden with the buckets. I still haven't done anything yet, but I'm starting to, you know, collect leaves. And I'll be putting leaves in there and everything. And that's got my little pepper plant I moved. The fig tree is trying to grow a fig this time of the year. Interesting. More potato mint. And then here are the tomatoes. They look wimpy, but you know what? We're still getting tomatoes. So can't complain. Whatever we get, we get. Look at that right here. Is that cool? And I'm picking them. This is okra. I think it will be done soon, but it's still growing okra. Here is lettuce, and I keep it covered so the white fly won't get to it. And you just uncover it, use it as you want. This is just some of them I moved. I told you how easy it is to move. There's three of them in there. So what you would do is pull this out. This is just nothing. This is just grass seed. This is, see, that's just grass seed that got in there. Probably because I'm using my own soil. But this is the lettuce. There's one there, one there, and one there. But I'm keeping it covered so it won't get white fly, and I just moved them. More zinnias. This here is the purple brassica that I did a cutting a while back, and it's growing beautiful. Look how gorgeous this plant is. Just beautiful. And I want to do a whole lot more cuttings, which I'm doing. And then again, I've got Korean melons growing still in here. So we'll see what happens. Red vein sorrel, more pepper plants. This is the black cobra. This, of course, is my pepino, and I'm doing cuttings on that. I've got, okay, it came up. 
this is what I was waiting for. This is my baby Dutch yellow potatoes in a small bucket. So I've got it growing in here. See them? There's one there. You don't need this. And that's just, just tr you know, the chop and drop. That's what you're doing with your weeds, the chop and drop. So these are potatoes. We'll see how this goes in this tote. I don't have anything else growing except for the milkweed is coming up now on its own by seed. And then here's a few more potatoes. I haven't planted them yet, so I kind of threw them in here. And I've got the stakes with the name written on there, and I'm going to get that planted soon. And look at this pepper. Can you see that? It's growing peppers. Is that cute? And then I've got the squash on the other side. I might get some more squash that's coming through. That's growing out of the bottom pink flower pot here, literally squishing out of the bottom. It was supposed to be compost in place, and it grew, and I left it. This watermelon's done. Though it may be good inside, but that's done. And then this, oh, I definitely have to get the weeds out because what's growing in here is some black turmeric. I had a teeny little skin piece and I threw it in there and it grew. I'll transplant that later in this, oh my gosh, something big. And look at the, the cucumber. Let's see if you can see that. See the cucumber? It's sheltered so well with all the tomato plants growing over it. So here's some more tomato plants growing that it's still growing. I don't know how many more cucumbers I'll get, if I will get any, but I've got that one. I've got to pick that. More potato mint here growing among the tomatoes. And then this is what I absolutely love, my cuttings. You know how I do this in the tote. I'm going to leave it out here all winter. Come spring, when I'm ready to grow, I'm going to have stuff. And I'm hoping this stays small and stays stunted because this, which I labeled, is a sun gold before the plant died back. I did a cutting on it. I only did one, but that's okay. If this makes it, I'll have tons of cuttings to take off of this. I want it to stay small. This is potato mint. These are all the different brassicas I've got in here. This is a pepino. This one made it really nice. I want everything to stay here like that. Keep it covered so no insects. The biggest thing that will get this right now is in the winter, nature sends in her army of insects. And a lot of you say, why are my plants covered in insects? Well, it's supposed to be because the insects come in to eat it to the ground and then it turns in the soil and the whole cycle starts again in the spring. But I don't want the cycle to start. I want it to stay alive, all my cuttings, so I don't want nature sending anything in there. So we'll kind of trick nature a little bit. I've got the same thing growing, going on in here. A couple more cuttings and different things in here. And I'm gonna set up more in there. I really haven't set anything up. There's a geranium in there. Keep the insects out and then you should have something to start with right away in the winter. You could probably do this if, even if you had snow, if you had someplace up against the building, uh, a place where it wouldn't get snowed on maybe and keep it covered, I'm not sure, but you could probably do it in the house too. There is my pizza garden. So I've got my sage, my onions, my tomatoes, my basils, purple and green are in there. Here's a tomato plant. It's being sheltered so well, it's coming up right there. This one doesn't look that good. I'll probably cut this one out. There's my thyme that's turning a little yellow as we're getting in the cold weather. And of course, the pepper plant keeps going. I, you know, I just picked a whole bunch and they're already turning red again. So I'm going to have to get them off because as long as I get them off, it will continue to grow more peppers. If you leave them, the plant thinks it's done well and then it won't grow. And then, of course, I already showed you that. And this is a purple tree color. Oh, and this is garlic. I planted some garlic in here, just going to forget about it, and then come spring, I should have plenty of garlic. Let's walk real quick into the bird garden. Nothing's done in there. A lot of strategizing what I'm going to do. But we'll walk in here. We've never ended it in here before I see the birds. They're way down there. Okay, this is my pride and joy plant. I'm doing a lot of cuttings on this because I have never seen anything so purple like this. I love this plant. Oh, look, the moringa is still doing flowers. Isn't that funny? This is broke. See how it swings? And I don't have time to get it in a pot. See how it's hanging there? As long as it hangs on, even by a thread, it's going to still be fed. Isn't that funny? By the plant. Okay, my papayas are still growing, doing good. Look at that. So I want to get some more papayas in the bird garden. Maybe not exactly like this, but you know what? Whatever works, what do I care? All right, so let's kind of take a backwards walk. We have tomatoes growing here. I have more eggplant growing back here. See the eggplant? I hope you can see it. See that? 
So I, I, oh, look at the big one down there. I didn't even see that one. Look at that. So I've got that one down here. That's a good size eggplant. Look at that. I'll have to get that later. Then I've got my tomatoes growing all through here. Again, the base of the plant, see how far down the soil goes on that? Way down. It goes to about there. This is all shelter for the bottom of the plant. So the plant doesn't really know, because eggplant's full of flowers too. It doesn't even know it's really time to go dormant, some of those, including the eggplant. So you can trick plants depending on where you live. You don't have snow, you can trick them. You have snow, well, well Mother Nature beat you on that one. And then that's it. So I've got here, you've seen that, sweet potato. I've got to go look, it's flowering, what's in there? Sage, walking onions, more stuff growing, baby walking onions in here, lemon balm in there, which I have to split. And it does do that in the winter. It goes brown a little bit when it's getting cold. But that's it. So I'll try to get through here. I want to set up this bird garden really cool. I'm making so many more bird fountains. You probably saw the one with the Christmas globe. Oh my goodness. And if you did, you can go to different places. I went to another store that was selling them. They had them bigger. And it doesn't matter. Bigger is okay. A little smaller is okay. The main thing you want is plastic. When you have a plastic globe, go back and watch the video. You can manipulate the holes and set it up the way you want. So I want to get some balls in here because this is the one that the hummingbirds love. They love to hang on to a ball. That's it's not really cement. I don't know what it's made out of, but they hang on to the top and they take their baths. And I want to get a lot of different water fountains. And of course, this is the gazebo that Gary found in the trash, but it's not put together right because this was never this big. So we just set up the corners way across from each other. And then I cross beamed it with tree limbs. Now, no hawk can get in here because a hawk has to swoop. And if he came down and swooped this way, he doesn't know how to get out and he wouldn't be able to maneuver right so they won't come in. And that's basically it. You've seen the whole thing now and you know where the secret garden is. It's right behind the wall there. And these, I'm gonna have to do something with them because they're growing this way. They shouldn't be growing this way. They got enough sun when we do have sun. Look at that, it's gonna rain. But, it is growing that way. You know what? Let me grab a piece of broccoli head for Kitty. I'll put that in my pocket. There's more, but I think we'll, I'll grab a couple pieces. I'll have it for her. I'm just putting it in my pocket. And then I've got chocolate mint there. And that's it. And there is the dragon fruit. So I'm going to have a ton of it coming up. Boy, am I going to have a ton of it coming up. I have to be careful with it because when I go back here to work, these things are spiky. Look at that. Isn't this beautiful? This is another hybrid brassica. The birds love sitting on it too, but it's just beautiful. Look how the deep green it is. It's bigger than dinosaur kale. It's greener, and sometimes they are even greener than this and bluer, but look how big the leaves are. I've only got one dinosaur plant on the other side. These, this died back, so this is all gonna go into a tote. Chop it all back, all compost it back. Well, here's, let's see, I got a dinosaur kale that's no, this is purple. I think I have one more on the other side of the yard. This looks like it might have been hybridized, but maybe, no, it is. It's probably hybridized with a dazzling blue kale. So that's it. And that is the original purple tree colored I got on eBay years ago. Still growing in that pot, but of course there's no real bottom on that. Just big, big holes. And it's leaned over all the way into the secret garden. And I can do cuttings off that. This is the best cutting. Look at this. You want a tree, you would take this off. See how straight it is? And then you would propagate that. That's the most beautiful cuttings, but it doesn't matter at all works. So I hope you enjoyed this. These are the ones that didn't make it. We had a lot of rainstorms during the time the flowers opened. The pollen didn't get where it wanted to or was supposed to get. But we've had so much fruit. It's not funny. We're almost sick of dragon fruit right now. And he's plenty more. No, we gave, we gave a lot away, gave the neighbors. We gave to my granddaughter who loves him, and Gary's been eating him. He's still eating him. He's got a stack in the house. So I think you've seen everything. And this was a different, oh, my monkey's got to go in. He's done. He's been out here for years. But I think you've seen everything now, and this is just a beautiful place to sit. None of the solar fountains are working right now because we're under dark clouds. Like I said, it's going to rain. But we've got two electric ones. Oh, that's a hummingbird. Let me see. I didn't notice it was a hummingbird because it's on the other side. 
they need a place to sit. Isn't that adorable? That's why they like the bowls or a little place where they know they can't drown. Is that just too cute? What a beautiful way to end the garden tour. I see more birds coming behind it. That is just too cute. Okay, you know what? I'm wasting your time. And the problem is I can sit here watching these birds all day. And here comes another one. Another one came in. He went behind. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this. I am strategizing what I'm going to do. But you know what? Everything you see here, 90% of it, not counting the flowers, the rest of it is all edible. All the brassicas. And believe you me, we use it. Tomatoes, peppers, even garlic. Garlic I've got growing in the kitchen window. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And I better get in because it looks like we're going to start really raining soon. Bye-bye. I just did my garden tour and it's good you were not out there.